Uh, can anybody get any sleep around here? Mama! Mama! Mommy! I said, shut your trap, Molly. Aw, oh, stop shoving the poor kid. She ain't doing nothing to you. She's keeping me awake, ain't she? No, you're keeping us awake. I am not. You are too. So, you think you're Jack Dempsey, do you? And you're looking for a knuckle sandwich. Oh, oh my I, I, you're not fighting, and I'm not getting to sleep all night. Oh my goodness. Pipe down, all of ya. Go back to sleep. Mama, Mama, Mommy. It's all right, Molly. Annie's here. It was my mama, Annie. We was riding on the ferry boat, and she was holding me up to see all the big ships. And then, and then she was walking away, waving, Then I couldn't find her no more any place. Blow. It was only a dream, honey. Now you gotta go back to sleep. It's after three o'clock. Annie, read me your notes again. Oh, my notes? Boy. Again? Please? Sure. Yay. Here it comes Yay. again. Please take good care of our little darling. Her name is Annie. She was born on October 28th. We'll be back to get her soon. We have left half of the silver locket around her neck and kept the other half. So that when we come back for her, you will know that she's our baby. <laughs> now they're laughing. All right. Do you want to sleep with your teeth inside your mouth or out? Gee, Annie, I dream about having a mother and a father again. But you're lucky. You really got them. I know. Somewhere. Somewhere. Maybe far away. Or maybe real nearby. He may be pouring her coffee. She may be straightening his tie. Betcha they're good, why shouldn't they be? Their one mistake was giving up me. So maybe now it's time, and maybe when I wake, they'll be there calling me. Maybe she's made me a closet of clothes Maybe they're strict, as straight as a line Don't really care, as long as they're mine So maybe now it's time And maybe when I wake They'll be there calling me Again! I don't care. I'm getting out of here. 
Okay, go in now. Wish me luck. Good, good luck, luck, Annie. So long, dumbbell, and good luck. Oh, uh huh. Concha, I hear you, Brad. I always hear you. What do you say? What do you say? I love you, Miss Hannigan. Rot an orphan? I'm not an orphan. My mother and father left a note saying they loved me and that they're coming back for me. Huh, that was 1922. This is 1933. They must have gotten stuck in traffic. <laughs> you in here! Get up! Get up, I said! I said get up! Put them things away! You. It, it's medicine. You must be very sick. Boo! shenanigans. Go scrub this floor and strip them beds for the laundry man. But it's yes. four o'clock in the morning. Oh, I know. And you'll get down on your knobby little knees and clean this dump till it shines like the top of the Chrysler building. Yes, yes, yes Miss Hannigan. Hannigan. Get to work! Now! Why any kid would want to be an orphan, I'll never know. It's our knock life for us. Morning bundles. Oh yeah, Eggy, running a little late. See you in January. Aw, oh, come here, you big handsome brute. Don't you want to know what I'm getting you for Christmas? What? Egg Fu Young in Chinatown for two on me. Egg Fu Young for Christmas? Yeah. Uh, what are you getting me? What did I get you last year? Nothing. Good. You're getting it again. Oh, get out of here with that damn laundry. Okay, so long, Eggy, and uh. Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, kids. Merry Christmas, Bundles. Dr. Harold. You call this place clean, Annie? It looks like.
like a pigsty. Annie, Annie, where's that Annie? Annie ain't here. What do you mean? Annie ain't here. Ah! Oh, she just went <laughs> with bundles in the laundry bag. Bundles! Police! Police! No more hard on life, Yeah. Yeah, free. Lucky yeah. 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 the cheese out. Two for a dime? Apples, anyone? Two for a nickel? Apples? May I this my back in the alley? Fifty cents. Fifty cents? Okay. We're supposed to be old funds are running around 14th Street. Come on. Hey, there's one they didn't get. Oh, poor boy. Did they hurt you? They're after you, ain't they? Well, they're after me, too. But don't worry. I won't let them get to you or me. I'll take care of you, and everything's gonna be fine. For the both of us. If not today, well... Sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Just thinking about tomorrow clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow till there's none. When I'm stuck with the day that's gray. Just think of my chin and grin and say, Oh, the sun will come out tomorrow. So you gotta hang on till tomorrow. Come what may, tomorrow, tomorrow. I love you tomorrow. You're always. 
Hey, you little girl, come here. Yes, officer? That dog over there, ain't I seen him running around the neighborhood? Ain't he a stray? A stray? Oh, no, officer. He's... he's my dog. Your dog, huh? So what's his name? His name? His name is... Sandy. That's right, Sandy. I call him Sandy, you see, because of his nice sandy color. Sandy color. All right. Let's see him answer to his name. Answer? You mean when I call him? Right. When you call him by his name, Sandy. Well, you see, officer, I just have got him and sometimes he just doesn't want to answer. Call him! Okay. Here, boy. Here, Sandy. Sandy. Here, boy. Sandy! Come here, Sandy. Sandy! Sandy! Good Sandy. Good old Sandy. Well, maybe he's your dog. But next time you take him out, I want to see him with a license. Or else it goes to the pound and I put him to sleep. You understand? Yes, officer. I understand. With a license. Now get out before you get your death of cold in this weather. Oh, I don't mind the weather. When I'm stuck with that day, that's gray and lonely. I just stick up my chin and grin and say, Oh, the sun will come out tomorrow. So you gotta hang on till tomorrow. Come what may, tomorrow, tomorrow. go to the alley. Seven million people in the city and you can't sell one lousy apple. Excuse me, folks? Excuse me? Did anybody here leave a red-headed kid at an orphanage 11 years ago? Nope. Not me, kid. Ladies and gents, dinner is served. The soup is on. Hey, kid, you hungry? Nah. Okay. But my dog is. Here, kid, eat your fill. Thanks, lady. So, kid, what you doing out this time of night? I'm looking for my parents. They're lost. Lost? How long have you been looking for them? Eleven years. Now that's... lost? <laughs> hey, kid, you should give up. No, I'm gonna find them. Hey, there's something I haven't heard since 1928. What? Optimism. <laughs> <laughs> Optimism? What have we got to be optimistic about? Look at us. Life's a nightmare. Well, you gotta have dream. Can't they growling overhead all night? To wake you up from your nightmare. <laughs> Empty pockets? At least you got pockets. Freezing fingers? Lucky you got them empty pockets. Newspapers for blankets? Huh. You can read in bed. Hey kid, you should be a politician. Yeah, you should have run against Roosevelt. Hey, listen to this. Former President Herbert Hoover said today in an interview, though I was in no way personally responsible for the 1929 stock market crash, I have the deepest sympathy for the millions in our ragged, hungry, and homeless. Ragged. Hungry. Homeless. Today we're living in a shanty. Today we're scrouching for a meal.
attention and we chose. Not only did we pay attention, we paid through the nose. In every pot he said a chicken, but Herbert Hoover he forgot. Not only don't we have a chicken, you ain't got the pot. Hey Herbie, you left behind a hateful racial friendship. So help our hats are off to you. Drip 
ribbon with pearls. Lucky me, lucky me, look at what I'm dripping with. Once again, we bring you the romance of Helen Trent, who sets out to prove for herself what so many women long to prove, that because a woman is 35 or more, romance in life needs not to be over, that romance can live in 35 and after. Oh, I'd hope so. Yeah? Good afternoon. Is Anakin, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Lieutenant Ward, 17th Precinct. We found her one of her. Oh, Annie. <laughs> oh, kids, guess what? what? There's hot cocoa and ginger snaps in the recreation room. What recreation? Oh, shoo shoo, shoo shoo. Not you. <laughs> shoo shoo. Thanks, officer. She was in one of them hoofables down by the docks. I had a mangy mutt with her, but he got away. Oh, poor pumpkin, out in the freezing cold with just this thin dress on. I hope you didn't catch influenza. <laughs> All in the line of duty. And you, don't let me ever hear you run away again from this nice lady. She's not a... Oh, thanks so much, officer. <laughs> <laughs> afternoon. Good afternoon. You, I could have gotten in real trouble for this. Had the board of orphans sticking their nose around here and wh who knows what... Oh, stay. Yeah? Well, good afternoon, Miss Hannigan. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, I'm Grace Farrell, and, and the New York City Board of Orphans suggests that I'm a second... Uh, uh, I can explain everything. It wasn't my fault. It was Annie over here, who, you know, who got into Bundles' laundry Ms. bag. Miss Hannigan, and, I don't... And know I know I should have called Mr. Donatelli instead of the cops, but I was in such a rush, and I Ms. just... Miss Hannigan, I'm sorry, but I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. Hold it, sister. If it's beauty products you're peddling, I don't need any. <laughs> Miss Hadling, I'm not peddling anything. Well, I'm, I'm the private secretary to Oliver Warbucks. Uh, uh, Oliver Warbucks. The Oliver Warbucks. The Oliver Warbucks. Oh, I love the hat. <laughs> you know, I read in Winchell's column that Oliver Warbucks is one of the world's richest unmarried men. Oh, well, I wouldn't know, Miss Hannigan. I don't read Mr. Winchell. But, Miss Hannigan, Mr. Warbucks has decided to invite an orphan to spend the Christmas holidays at his home. An orphan? Yes, an orphan. You're sure he wouldn't rather have a lady? <laughs> I got two weeks coming. Ah, uh, it was a joke. What sort of orphan did you have in mind? Well, um, she should be friendly uh, and intelligent. Mississippi, capital M I double S I double S I double B I. Oh, and cheerful. <laughs> oh, shut up, Delania! Anna, what age did you have in mind? Oh, um, age doesn't really matter. Let's say eight or nine, ten. Eleven? Yes, 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 Miss Hannigan. Eleven is just, just perfect, just fine. Oh, Miss Hannigan, I almost forgot. I'm sorry. Mr. Warbucks prefers red-headed children. Eleven? A redhead? I'm sorry. We ain't got any orphans like that around here. Well, what about this child right here? Oh, Annie. You wouldn't want Annie, because uh, uh, she's a drunk and a liar. She's a drunk liar. Yes, Miss Hannigan, a drunk and a liar. 
Now, Annie, how would you like to spend the next two weeks at Mr. Warbucks' house? I would love to. I would really love uh -uh, to. Uh-uh, hold it, sister. You can have any orphan in this orphanage, <coughs> but not Annie. Well, why not? I Miss... just told ya. Well, I assume, Miss Hannigan, that it has something to do with all that business about the laundry bag and the police. Well, perhaps I should just call Mr. Dometsky. Oh, Dometsi that won't be necessary. Sign it. I I'm an easy gal to get along with, if it's uh, Annie you want. It's Annie you get. Oh, well, um, it's Annie I want. It's Annie you get. Now, if you'll just get a coat and I'll take her along right now. <laughs> coat, she ain't got no coat. <laughs> oh, well, then we'll go buy her one. Oh, boy! We'll go to Bergdorf's and get you a nice warm winter coat. I'm getting a coat! She's getting a coat! Well, come along now, dearie. Mr. Warbucks' limousine is waiting outside. Oh, boy. I can hardly believe it. She can hardly believe it. Hey, kids. I'm getting out for Christmas. All right, Zuya. Bye, Bye, Annie. Bye, kids. Good afternoon, Miss Higgins. Good afternoon. And season's greetings. Yeah, yeah, season's come greetings. Come on, Annie. Good afternoon, Drake. Everyone. Miss. Has Mr. Warbox arrived yet? No, Miss. He's playing from Chicago and at 3.30, so we're expecting him any minute. Do you really live here? Or is this a train station? Oh, we really live here, Annie. Oh, boy. Oh, Mrs. Greer. Yes, Miss. Well, has the carpet been put down in the dining room, Mrs. Greer? Yes, Miss. And has the Steinway been tuned? Yes, Miss. Everything is in order, Miss. Mrs. Pugh has prepared his favorite dinner. New England clam chowder. Oh, wonderful. Kentucky fried chicken. Splendid. Idaho potatoes. And? Baked Alaska. Oh, fine. It will be good to see Mr. Warbucks again. Yes, yes. Well, um, six weeks is a long time. Yes, miss. Now, everyone, would you all come here for a moment, please? Quickly, everyone. Come quickly. Everyone, this is Annie. 
And she'll be with us for Christmas. Miss. Miss. Uh, Annie, this is everyone. Hi, everyone. May I take your coat, Miss? Will I get it back? Well, of course, Annie. She. I really love my new coat, Miss Farrell. Oh, I'm glad. Now, what would you like to do first? Um, the floors. I'll scrub them. Then I'll get to the windows. Oh, Annie, you don't understand. You don't have to do any cleaning while you're here. I won't? Well, of course not. You're our guest. And for the next two weeks, you're going to have a swell time. Now, Cecile will pick out all your clothes. Maybe it's this color. No blue, I think. Your bed is drawn by Mrs. Greer. So, no bubbles, bubbles I think. Annette comes in to make your bed. The silk sheets. No, the satin sheets, I think. I think I'm gonna like it here. The swimming pool is to the left. Inside the house. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. The tennis court is in the rear. I never even picked up a racket. Oh, what? Have an instructor here at noon. Oh, I get the Don Budge fellow if he's available. Yes, miss. I think I'm gonna when you wait, bring for Trey, Drake will bring your tray. When you're through, Mrs. Few comes to take it away. No need to pick up any toys. That's okay, I haven't got any anyway. No finger will lift my dear. Everybody. Sir. Sir. Oh, welcome home, Mr. Warbucks. Welcome home, Mr. Warbucks. It's good to be home. How is it from Chicago? Not bad. It took 17 hours, only so only had to land eight times. Now, first things first. Has the painting arrived from Paris? Yes, sir. They're just about to hang it now, sir. Ah, yes. No, I don't think so. Grace? Yes, sir. Messages. Yeah, President Roosevelt, you wanted to call him at the White House. I'll get back to him tomorrow. Anyone else? Uh, John D. Rockefeller, Mark Magand, and Harpo Marx. Nothing urgent. What did Harpo want? He did not say, sir. Wait a minute. Maybe I can learn to live with this thing. Hang it someplace. But, Mr. Warbucks, I'd Miss like Pugh. you to meet... New England clam chowder. Wonderful. Kentucky fried chicken. Wonderful. And baked I will be having dinner tonight. I've got hours of paperwork to get through. Wonderful. Now, Grace? Yes, Grace, sir. I'll need you for dictation. Yes, sir. All right, good to see you all again. Drake, dismiss the staff. If you'll get your notebook. Oh, yes, sir. Who's that? Oh, this is Annie, Mr. Warbucks. The orphan will be with us for Christmas. The orphan? That, that's not a boy. Orphans are boys. Well, sir, you only said an orphan, so I chose a girl. Well, I suppose she'll have to do. Annie, huh? What's your last name, child? Oh, I don't have any last name, sir. Mr. Warbucks, that I know of. So you're just Annie? Just Annie. I'm sorry that I'm not a boy. I, uh, I don't suppose you'd like to meet Babe Ruth? Oh boy, sure! <laughs> Who's Babe Ruth? Well, uh, Annie, I couldn't be happier that you'll be spending Christmas with us. Now, Grace, we'll start with the figures on the iron ore shipments from... 
What are we supposed to do with this child? Oh, well, it is our first night here, sir. Well, well, any your first night here, I guess we ought to do something special for you. Why don't you just sit down? Maybe. A movie. You want to go to a movie? Gosh, sure, Mr. Warbucks. I mean, I've heard a lot about him, but I've never been to one. Never? No, sir. Well, then we've got to do something about that right away. And nothing but the best for you, Annie. You'll go to the Roxy, then an ice cream soda at Rompermeyer's, and a handsome cab ride around Central Park. Golly! Forget about the dictation for tonight. We'll do it first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Instead, you take Annie to the movies. Oh. Well, yes, sir. Aw, oh, gee. Uh, something the matter, Annie? Nothing, sir. It's just... Aw, oh, gee. No, what is it, child? You don't want to go to the Roxy. No, I want to. It's just that... Well, I thought you were going to take me. me. Oh, no, I'm afraid I'll be far too busy tonight. Aw, oh, gee. See, Annie, I've just been away for six weeks, making an inspection drawer of my factories, what's left of my factories with this damn depression. And when a man is running a multi-billion dollar corporation that has... That's enough... okay. I understand, Mr. Warbucks. Excuse me, sir. Bernard Perugis is calling. Oh, good. Hello, Barney. Yes, I got in an hour ago. No Detroit and Chicago. Barney, I didn't like what I see out there. Factory shut down. My factory shut down. You're damn... You're down tootin'. When I'm not making money, nobody is. And gosh darn it, Barney. Your pal Roosevelt has got to do something drastic. He's got to come up with a new plan, a new approach, a new something. Yes, I know he's a Democrat, but he's a human being too. All right. Come over here tonight and we'll be able to... And I can... Barney, make it tomorrow. Tonight I've got a date to go to the movies with a ten-year-old girl. Eleven? I was mistaken. She's eleven. Bye, Barney. Drake? Yes, sir? Coats? Yes, sir. Uh, Grace, you'll come too, of course. Oh, yes, sir. I can see I've been away for six weeks. Will you be answering the Bentley, sir, or the Dusenberg? The Dusenberg. Excellent choice. No, wait. This child's been cooped up in an orphanage. No, Dusenberg, we'll walk. Walk to the Roxy? Sure, why not? It's only 45 blocks. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Smell that marvelous Fifth Avenue bus fumes? There's no air like the air of New York. And you don't realize how much you miss it. The whole damn city. Unless you've been away for a while. Like the man always says. After New York, every place else is rich, but... Why? 
wine See What is it about you You're big You're loud You're tough And why See I go years without you Then I Can't get Enough Enough of cab drivers answering back in languages of Frompior. Enough of Frankfurters answering back. Brother, you know your N N Y C. Too busy, too crazy, too hot, too cold, too late. I'm sold. Again in N Y C. Come on, you slow folks. We gotta get to the rocks before the prizes change. N Y C. The shadows at sundown. The roofs that scream. The sky. State and a mayor five foot two. No other town in the whole 48 can half compare with you. NYC. Make them all postcards. You, you crowd, you crowd, you're still the champ. Amen for NYC. that I'm square, but damn, I come alive, this city's bright as a penny octave, it blinks, it tilts, it rings.
There will be immediate seating. Popcorn? What do you say to some popcorn? I haven't had popcorn since. Give in. Don't fight. Good girl. Good night. Amen. For end. Why see? Hannigan? Oh, Farrell, you're back early, only one week. What's the matter? Warbucks fed up with Annie already? Oh, no, on the contrary, Mr. Warbucks is delighted with Annie. And well, Annie is having the time of her life. Oh, wonderful. You uh, see, they are practically inseparable. They go everywhere together, Miss Hannigan. To the Roxy, the Stock Exchange, and just guess what they had lunch yesterday? The Waldorf? The Auto Man. The Auto Man? <laughs> yes, Miss Hannigan, and she just loves her new coat. <laughs> She never takes it off. Never. Never, Miss Hannigan. Well, um, I know you're... Hey, that's mine! Busy. But this has to be signed and sent back to Mr. Donatelli at the Board of Orphans by no later than 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. What for? Because Mr. Warbucks is so taken with Annie that... Guess what? What? He wants to adopt her. Uh, adopt her? Yes. You mean Annie's gonna be the daughter of a millionaire? Oh, no, Miss Hannigan. The daughter of a billionaire. A billionaire? Mm -hmm. And Mr. Warbucks asked me to drop by in person to tell you that Annie won't be coming back here ever. Ever? My, my, my. Would you excuse me for a moment, please? Ah! <coughs> you got any more wonderful news? Well, I told you about the coat, didn't I? Oh, you told me about the coat, all right. Well, then, good day, Miss Hannigan. And Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Oops, uh, pardon me, Blondie. <laughs> ah, ah, ah! <laughs> yes, it's long time no see. Rooster, it never rains, but it pours. They finally let you out of Sing Sing. Uh, I got six months off of good behavior. Huh, what was it this time? 
Ah, some old geezer from the yarn crew said I swindled him out of 1100 bucks. Why'd he say that? Cause the, the swindled him out of 1100 bucks. Ah, no, you, you. What? It's true. <laughs> Sis, uh, I'd like you to meet my new gal from, uh... Jersey uh, City? <laughs> Jersey City, Miss Lily St. Regis. I'm named after a hotel. <laughs> Which floor? <laughs> Don't you just what? love Lily, sis? Oh, I'm not so bad, a rooster. Do me a favor. And Get out of here and take St. Regis with you. Oh, come on, sis. Ah, you're looking for another hand now. Nah, I got 80 bucks coming in the mail on Thursday. <laughs> so it's all I need is 10 to send me over. Not even a nickel for the subway, oh, Ralph. Oh, come on, a five or egg. Five bucks, I gotta laugh. What I couldn't do with five bucks. You with all your big talk, gonna be living in Clover. Well, you know this ain't exactly Buckingham Palace. Well, I'm on the city. Free food, free gas and electric, steady salary. I'd say I'm doing all right. Sis, you're doing like I'm doing. Lousy. Oh, Aggie. How come my Zanigans ended up with the fuzzy in the lollipop? I remember the way our sainted mother would sit and croon us her lullaby. She'd say, kids, there's a place that's like no other. You gotta get there before you die. You don't get there by playing from the rule book. <laughs> you stack the aces. Mm -hmm. You load the dice. Mother dear, oh, we know you're down there listening. How can we follow your sweet advice to ease SG? The hot tomato in a fancy car. Ah, oh, private secretary, it's Oliver Warbucks. The Oliver Warbucks? The millionaire? Nah, the billionaire, you dumb hoe. Tell. Lives up on Fifth Avenue in his mansion. Hey, Warbucks don't live on Fifth Avenue. He don't. Where does he live? from around here. Gosh, I hate that kid. She's gonna be adopted by Warbucks. That kid's gonna have everything. That rotten kid's gonna have everything. A crummy orphan living in the lap of luxury. It ain't fair. Nah, it ain't fair. Jeez. It ain't fair how we scrounge but three or four bucks while she gets four bucks. The little brat. She holds the key, this little lady. Ah, to get in more bucks instead of less. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we fix the game with something shady. Where would that put us, Roxella? I'll give you one guess. Yes, 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 yes. yes.
Yes, 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 Mr. President. No, I'll grant you that Barney Baruch and I are not exactly standing on bread lines yet. No, I'm not asking for your help. I've never asked any man for his help, and I never will. But I'm telling you that you've got to do something and do it damn fast. All right. We'll talk about it on... Friday. Friday. Friday at the White House. Goodbye, Mr. President. Listen, Mr. President. Why don't we bury the hatchet and you come here with Miss Roosevelt for supper Christmas Eve on your way to Hyde Park? Good. I'm delighted. Goodbye, Mr. President. If I thought he was going to say yes, I never would have asked him. Grace, uh, call Old Smith and find out what Democrats eat. Yes, sir. The package from Tiffany's? Yes, sir. Arrived this morning. Good. I'm going to give this thing to her and tell her that I want to adopt her. Where is Annie? Well, she's upstairs in her room, sir. Probably writing another letter to the orphanage. I'll have Drake call her. Thank you. Damn. You know, sir, you don't have to be nervous. She's going to be the happiest little girl in the world. Of course she is. And I'm not nervous. And get her down here. Yes, sir. Life's overflowing. Why should I change a thing? Love how it's going. Got the world on that string. Why disturb the peace? Why not let things be? Why risk getting close? When close just isn't me I'd say I'm happy Why am I tempting fate? Who needs more happy? Anyway, it's too late Who needs the clatter? that a little girl would bring. Why change the mailbox? Damn, what do I know about children? 
Except they usually come small. They read but not the Wall Street Journal. They write with crayons on the wall. Does one have breakfast with him often? Take them to movies and to school. Why don't you get some clear instructions? Like when you buy a set of tools. Damn, what do I know about children? Could they just possibly be fun? I think the thing that's most disturbing I don't remember being one Why should I change a thing? Got the world on that string Why disturb the peace? Why not let things be? Why risk getting close when close just isn't me? Not a thing stays the same. And now when I send Christmas cards, and a name It's a mistake to take Her underneath my wing Why change the mailbox? Redo the bedrooms Undo vacations Learn to love cornflakes Change a blessed thing. To you now. Thank you, Mr. Drake. Hello, Annie. How are you today? Fine, thank you. How are you, sir? Fine. 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 Annie, the time has come for the two of us to have a, a very serious discussion. You're sending me back to the orphanage, right? Annie, can we have a man-to-man -man talk? Sure. I was born into a very poor family, in what they call Hell's Kitchen right here in New York. Both of my parents died before I was ten, and I made a promise to myself that one day, one way or another, I would be rich. Very rich. That was a good idea. <laughs> When I was 23, I made my first million, and in 10 years' time, I turned it into 100 million. Boy, in those days, that was a lot of money. Anyway, making money is all I've ever given a damn about. And I might as well tell you, Annie, I was ruthless to those who had to climb over to get to the top. Because I always believed one thing. You don't have to be nice to the people you meet on the way up when you're not coming back down again. But I've lately realized something. No matter how many Rembrandts or Duesenbergs you have, when you have no one to share your life with when you're alone, then you might as well be broke and back in Hell's Kitchen. You understand what I'm trying to say? Sure. Good. Kind of. Kind of. I guess not. Oh, damn. I was at Tiffany's yesterday and picked up this thing for you. For me? Gee, thanks, Mr. Warbox. I had it engraved. Gosh. It's a silver locket, Annie. I noticed that old broken one you always wear, and I said to myself, I'm going to get that kid a nice new locket. Thank you, Mr. Warbucks. Thank you very much. Well, then why don't we just take this no. old one off? No, please don't make me take my locket off. I don't want a new one. Annie, what is it? This locket. My mom and dad left it to me when... when they left me at the orphanage. There was a note, too. They're coming back for me. And I know... Being here with you for Christmas, I'm real lucky, but I don't know how to say it. The one thing I want in the whole world, more than anything, is to find my real mother and father, and to be like other kids, with folks on my own. It'll be all right, Annie. I'll, I'll find them for you. I'll find your parents for you. It'll be all right, Annie. I'll get her a brandy. <laughs> Just see, if anyone can find your parents, Warbox is the man. And Mr. Warbox will find them. 
If he has to pull every political string there is to pull, up into including the White House, he'll do it. The League of Nations. If he should meet the FBI, Warbucks, I want 50 of your best G-men. Days, weeks, months, for however long it takes. Put them on vacation, I'll pay for it. I'll pay all costs. Good. When can I have them? Tomorrow morning. Oh, and Jay, I want Elliot Ness. Well, just take him off the Capone case. Hip hip! Hooray! I understand, I, just told you. I understand, but it could be our best clue. We'll have the FBI men trace where it was bought and find out who bought it. Oh, okay. And maybe the FBI should have my note too. Annie, you might be meeting your mother and father within a, a couple of days. Oh boy, I gotta go write a letter to the kids about this. Not a thing to occur, finding them, losing her. Oh, you won't be an orphan for long. And Mr. Warbuck says that I'm going to be meeting my mother and father within a couple of days. So maybe now it's time that maybe when I wake They'll be there calling me baby, baby.
Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Annie. On America's favorite radio program, The Occident Hour of Smile, starring your old softie, Bert Healy. A moment of tears? Say something. Thank you, Bertini. But still remember, folks. Smile, darn you, smile. That's right, Wacky. Smile, darn you, smile. Say, Wacky, who's that who just walked into our WEAF studio? Why, it's none other than the wealthy industrialist and Wall Street tycoon, Oliver Warbucks. Now, Oliver Warbucks, I understand that you have something to tell the folks at home about our wonderful little Annie here. Yes, good evening, Bert Healy. Annie's an 11-year-old founding who was left by her parents on the steps of New York's municipal orphanage on the night of December 31st, 1922. And aren't you now conducting a coast-to-coast -coast nationwide search for Annie's parents? Yes, Bert Healy, I'm now conducting a coast-to-coast -coast nationwide search for Annie's parents' draw page. Furthermore, I'm offering a certified check for $50,000 to anyone who can prove that they're Annie's parents. Wow! Wow! So, Annie's parents, if you're listening in, write to Oliver Warbucks, care at the station, WEAA, New York, or directly to him at... At my home, Bert Healy. At my home! At my home, Bert Healy, 987 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. That's 987 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. And I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the makers of all new Occident toothpaste with Miracle L64 to fight bad breath for letting me appear here this evening. And I just did a damn commercial. Grace, I never endorsed a product in my life. It's the most embarrassing radio station. Uh, good night, Oliver Warbucks. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks for dropping by, Oliver Warbucks. So, and his parents, if you're listening in, there's fifty thousand dollars and a wonderful little daughter waiting for you to get in touch right away. You hear? Hey, Mr. Healy, isn't it time once again for the lovely Boylan sisters? Oh, it most certainly is, Wacky. Well, as Eva the old clock, another of our Thursday night get togethers has gone by faster than you can say, Occident. The toothpaste of the stars. To make your teeth Hollywood bright. So, for all the Arrow Smiles family, starring Ronnie, Bonnie, Owen, lovely Connie, Fred McCracken, the lovely Boylan sisters, and Wacky. That's Bert Healy saying, ha, ha, ha. Hey, hobo man, hey, Dapper Dan, you both got your style the brand. You're never fully dressed without a smile. Your clothes may be Boba Romilly, they stand out and mild the brand. You're never fully dressed without a smile. Or Savile Row is what you wear from ear to ear and not from head to toe that matters. So, Senator, so, Janitor, so long for a while. Remember, you're never fully dressed without a smile. Oh, the lovely Boylan sisters. This is your old softy, Mrs. Healy's boy, Bert, saying until next week, same time, same station. Gute Nacht, buon seras, buones noches, kundres gadres. And gosh, I almost forgot. 
Good night. <laughs>
Ma'am? Yeah, what do you want? Well, we had terrible troubles back then, and we had to head north up to Canada, and we had to leave a baby here on the front stoop. Our little girl? Our... Annie! Annie! You're Annie's parents? Oh, please, nothing's happened to her. Oh, Annie's parents, I can't believe it. Oh, where'd you say you come from again? Well, we came from a little farm up in Canada. Manitoba? Where they got lots of chickens. Little chickens. And ducks. Ducks? And geese. Oh, you should see all the geese. And uh, roosters. <laughs> I got you, sis. Rooster, I never would have known it was you in a hundred years. I fooled you, Aggie. And we're gonna fool all bucks too? Yeah, get ourselves 50,000 big ones. Oh, this is gonna be the best Funko job ever. I know a guy out of jail who can doctor up a fake birth certificate or any other papers you want. But we need your help, sis, for the details about any to help us pull this thing up. Oh, I could help you a lot, but uh, what's in it for me? Three way split, Aggie. Half. Half? Half. Half, half, half. half. Straight down the middle, 25 grand each. But we gotta do it fast, Aggie. I mean, we give him some of the old rooster razzle dazzle. In and out, two to three minutes tops. We get the money, get the kid, and we get the hell out of town. The kid, Annie, that's the problem. What do we do with her afterward? Aggie, that's no problem. Yeah, because when the rooster wants to make something disappear, it disappears. For good. Rooster. Oh, come on, Aggie. We get the 50 grand and we blow the scrummy town. And then, uh, Lil and me will meet ya. Where? Oh, yeah! Is that street? Is that street? And he is the king. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that street? Is that street? That's where. President Roosevelt has so far lived up to none of his lofty campaign promises. All we have had from Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his so-called brain trust brain is trust. a great deal of high-flown talk and virtually no action. In a nation wrecked by poverty, misery, and unemployment, it is deeds we want from the White House, not words. In short, Mr. President, if you are listening, we've had enough of your fireside chats. It's time to... Criticism, damn it, nothing but criticism. I know, I know. It's awful. Did anybody see the Washington Post this morning? My friends, I say again, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Franklin, you've already been elected. Every cloud is a silver lining. You're never fully dressed without a smile. Smile, smile, smile. 
over Warbucks and friend. Thank you, Louis. Show them in. Ah, oh. Oliver, good of you to have come. Good morning, Mr. President. Well, who is this we have? Mr. President, this is my good friend Annie. Annie. She so wanted to meet you, I couldn't resist bringing her along. Just oh. to say hello. Of course, the girl who sang so beautiful on the radio last night. Annie, this is President Roosevelt. How do you do, President Roosevelt? How do you do, Annie? You're as lovely as you sounded on the radio. Thank you, President Roosevelt. Well, uh, shall we begin? And if you'll wait outside. No, no, Oliver, let any stay. Keeping a child on hand will keep us on our best behavior. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> <coughs> Harold, I don't even want to hear as much as a gosh out of you. Franklin, a child. Now, Oliver, since you speak for those happy few Americans who has any money left, I'd like to begin with your views of matters. Mr. President, in the words of Calvin Coolidge, the business of this country is business. Yes, and for the good of you, Wall Street, the country, and me, we've got to get my factories open and the workers back to work. According to my latest figures, there are now 5 million Americans with no work and nearly 50 million with no visible means of support. Mr. President, if I may say so, unemployment is not our worst problem. The dispatches from Germany are becoming more and more disturbing each day. There could be a war. Germany? How people are starving in this country? Franklin, I know that, but in the long run... Cordell, for people who are starving, there is no long run. The problem is that it's all happening at once. The stock market has taken another nosedive. Sit down riots, strikes, floods, dust storms. And the FBI still hasn't caught Al Campone. <laughs> well, at least we agree on one thing. The situation is hopeless and getting worse. Henry, I'd like to see those figures. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom Shh. dollar. Quiet, little girl. Harold, what did you say, little girl? No, go ahead, my dear. It's still a free country. Just thinking about tomorrow Clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow Till there's none When I'm stuck with the day that's grey and lonely I just stick up my chin and grin Stand up. Up, up, up. Now, Harold, sing. <laughs> sing? <laughs> yes, sing, like any. I've just decided that if my administration is going to be anything, it's going to be optimistic of the future of this country. Now, sing. But, Frank, can you know that sing. I... Sing. The sun will come out tomorrow. Louder, Harold. To bottom dollar <laughs> that tomorrow. <laughs> There'll be sun hurricanes Just thinking about tomorrow Clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow So there's a long for the president When I'm stuck with the day There's gray and lonely I just think I'll march Excuse me, it's up my And grin and say Everyone Republicans do whatever sing Come out tomorrow So you gotta hang on till tomorrow Come on, man Tomorrow, tomorrow I love ya tomorrow You're always a day away Tomorrow, tomorrow I love ya Excuse me, everyone. 
This isn't for me. It's for you, Oliver. From your secretary in New York. Hundreds of couples jamming straight outside house, all claiming to be Annie's parents. Oh, boy! Have begun to screen them. Suggest you better get back to New York at once. Signed, Grace Farrell. Well, it looks like, though, the hour of smiles is more listeners than we thought. Huh, Annie? Gee, hundreds of couples. And one of them is bound to be my mother and father. Well, Oliver, I suspect you better get back to New York immediately. Yes, if you don't mind, Mr. President. Annie. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye, Annie. Goodbye, Mr. President, and thank you. No, thank you, Annie. You're the kind of person a president should have around him. <laughs> Mr. President, what if we set up a hundred? No, a thousand federal projects. Dance. Yes. Highways. Yes. New post offices. I put up the unemployment to build them. We could create five million new jobs within six months. With weekly paychecks, we could get them off of relief and back to paying taxes. We'll build a country so strong that not even Chancellor Hitler could defeat us in a war. Uh -uh. <laughs> Mr. President, what we've got to give this country is nothing more than a new outlook. A new vision. A new approach. A new concept. A new dedication. A new horizon. Yes. A new spirit. Mm. A new attitude. A oh. new deal. Oh. <laughs> Perkins, gentlemen. I was right the first time. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I love ya. Tomorrow. You're only a day away. Harmony. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love ya, tomorrow, you're only a day There's still no sign of Mr. Warbox's Annie. Well, Drake, would you just look at all these questionnaires? Do you realize that I've talked to 617 men who've claimed to be Annie's father, and, and 617 women who've said that they were Annie's mother? Well, that makes about, let me see. 1,236. All liars, Drake. Well, I've never realized that there were so many dishonest people on the island of Manhattan. Some of them were from the Bronx, miss. Grace, we are back. Where are they, Miss Farrell? Where are all the people? Oh, Annie, I'm afraid they're come and gone, dear. I'm so sorry, Annie, but they were all liars and fakes after nothing but the $50,000. Are you certain? Yes, sir. None of them knew about the locket. Gee, I thought for sure somebody was going to be my mother and father. Mr. Wilbox, this has just come from the FBI. Ah, oh, finally. Elliot Ness has located the manufacturer of Annie's Locket in Yetisha, New York. 
That sort of locket was manufactured between 1918 and 1924. Sort of locket? Yes. Over 90,000 were made and sold. 90,000? And I'm afraid that the gist of it is that Ness doesn't think there's a chance in a million of tracing your parents through the locket. I'm sorry. That's okay. I mean, you did the best you could. If you can't find them, nobody can. And I guess a kid can get along without folks. I mean, you didn't turn out so bad. You got everything. All them Duesenbergs hanging on the wall. Excuse me, sir. I'll go check on the dinner menu. Annie, uh, a Duesenberg is a car. Babe Ruth is the right fielder for the New York Yankees. And there's something else you should know. I've made me a fortune, that fortune made ten. Been headlined and profiled again and again. But something was missing. I never quite knew that something is someone but who. My speeches are greeted with thunderous acclaim at two universities bearing my name. Yes, something was missing each time I got through. That something is someone but who? Who could that someone be? How could she make it known? Need me for me, need me for me alone. The world was my oyster, but where was the pearl? Who dreamed I could find it in one little girl? Yes, something was missing, but dreams can come true. That something is no one but you. Not bad for an old man. Need me for me, need me for me alone. Who would need me for me, need me for me alone? The world was my oyster, but where was the pearl? Who dreamed I could find it in one little girl? Yes, something was missing, but dreams can come true. That something is no one but you. Grace, Grace. Yes, sir? Do you have those legal papers I gave you the other day? Oh, well, we'll get them right away, uh, sir. No, wait, Grace, I... I want you to stay for a moment. Well, 
years since J.P. Morgan went bust. Annie, sit down. Annie, I, I want to adopt you. Adopt me? Yes or no? If I can't have my real mother and father, there's no one in the world I'd rather have for a father than you, Mr. Warbucks. Drake. Yes, sir? Call Justice Brandies and ask him to come over to sign those adoption papers. Yes, sir. Grace, yes. tell Miss Pugh that there will be a house full of guests. We'll need flowers. Flowers? Uh, caviar. Uh, caviar. And champagne. And champagne. Well, Annie, this isn't just going to be an adoption. It's going to be a celebration, and you can have anyone in the world you would like to come to it. Who would you like? Babe Ruth, Johnny Rockefeller, Madame Cheyenne, Kai Shek. She's a lot of fun. Well, I guess I'd like Miss Farrell here, and Mr. Drake, Annette, Cecile, Mrs. Greer, Mrs. Pugh. I guess I'd like everybody here. Of course. That's why I'd like to. Drake, Yes, sir. Tell the staff to get spiffed up. They're going to be the guests at Annie's adoption party. Yes, sir. Oh, and the kids. Oh, no, no. It'll be far past their bedtime. But I tell you what. We'll have everyone from the orphanage here tomorrow for a big Christmas party. Miss Hannigan, too? Miss Hannigan, too. Why not? Excuse Grace, me, sir. Oh, yes. Everyone is getting, and these are yours, sir. Uh, spiffed up for the party. Ah, oh, good. I think Annie and I should get spiffed up, too. Grace. Uh, half sister. You look very pretty. Why, well, thank you for noticing, sir. Half sister, you'll put Annie into one of her new dresses and have Annette do something with her hair. I don't know, I'll take her upstairs and gussy her up. Yes, sir. Gussy her up, gussy her up, gussy her up, gussy her up. Annie, Annie, Annie. Everything's humming now. Hum, hum. Hum, 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 good times are coming now since you came away. It's Christmas, Christmas every day. We miss this bad times, sad times, now there are mysteries. Rockefeller's got barrels of money Annie, We've got Annie, Annie look, look what you've done for us Annie, Big promoters got dancing Annie, and tiny Annie, We've got Annie, Annie turn all the fun, fun for us Then he's the king by far By far, by far, by far, by far. But it's got Jeff and Adam for FDR Just recognize My friends, welcome to the happiest night of my life. Annie, I think I'm the luckiest man in the world. And I'm the luckiest kid. Together at last. Together forever. We're tying a knot They never can sever I don't need sunshine now To turn my skies to blue I don't need anything but you You wrap me around That cute little finger You've made life a song And you've made me the singer And what's the best of tune you Anything but you. Yesterday was plain awful. awful. You can say that again. Again. Yesterday was plain awful. But that's but no. that's then. I'm poor as a mouse. Well, I'm richer than Midas. But nothing on earth could, could ever divide, divide us. And, and if tomorrow, tomorrow I'm an apple seller too. I don't need anything but you I'll need it is mother Who would need 
needed his shop. Or Bill needed his brother. Or else he'd go kerplop. The two are gone. The happiest there now. Black Friday and down. They're floating on air now. And it was the title of the dream that just came true. I don't need anything. Ready to begin. The adoption procedure is very simple. According to the laws in the state of New York. What? Sir? Excuse us, folks. We don't mean to interrupt. Surely, look, there's our Annie. Who are you? Oh, honey, we're your mom and dad. Mudge, Mudge is the name Ralph Mudge, and this year's the wife, Shirley. You never knew it, dear, but you're Annie Mudge. Annie Mudge? We were sick and broke, honey, and we didn't know which way to turn, and the man gave us a chance to work up on his farm up in Canada. Yeah, but we couldn't bring along no baby. We loved you, Annie, but we had to leave you behind. Mr. Much, is it? Well, we've seen a great number of people who've claimed to be Annie's parents, oh, and... Oh, proof. I'll expect you'll be wanting proof of who we are. Well, here's our driver's licenses and Annie's birth certificate. Baby girl named Anne Elizabeth Mudge, born to Ralph and Shirley Mudge, October 28th, 1922. October 28th? That's my birthday. Those are the dates in your notes, sir. Yes, I know, but I, I still don't. Oh, Mr. Please, you got to believe us. Well, uh, we got on the ground this afternoon, and we went straight to the orphanage to fetch our Annie, and the lady there said that our baby was up here. Oh, Annie, all these years I've dreamed of holding you in my arms again. <laughs> Mr. Match, on the night that Annie was left at the orphanage, oh, where... Oh, there's something you wouldn't know about, but uh, when we left Annie at the orphanage, we left half a silver locket, and we kept the other half, you know, so Ralph, one day... Ralph, look, she's wearing it! And here's the other part we kept. Oh, yes, it fits perfectly. Oh, thank gosh, Ralph, she's our Annie. <laughs> she is, she is. She seems to be. Well, uh, if you'll be getting her things together, we'll be taking her Take along. Her. No. Just a moment, Mr. Much. what about the money? Money? Well, we ain't got no much butter. We'll be glad to give you whatever. You haven't heard that I've offered a certified check for $50,000 to anyone who can prove that they're Annie's parents? No, sir. We don't know nothing about no money. I mean, we don't want no money after all. Right. <laughs> we don't want no money for any. Well, on the other hand, Cheryl, remember that uh, little, little pig from out of New Jersey? I mean, with the $50,000, we could afford to buy it, you know. And we could afford to bring Annie up right in the country with uh, fresh eggs and a fresh ham. And fresh ham! <laughs> fresh ham as well. So it's sort of right, huh? All I gotta do is make it out to myself. Yes. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Yes, you wouldn't mind if Annie stayed here until tomorrow morning, Christmas. Then you can come back to pick up Annie and the check. Uh -huh. <laughs> Problem? No, no, whatever you prefer, sir. So, uh, I think we should be getting back to our hotel now. Well, uh, goodbye, Annie. Until tomorrow morning, honey, then you'll be spending the rest of your life with us. Goodbye, Annie, love. <laughs> Oops, uh, pardon me, Blondie. <laughs> and a Merry Christmas. Season's greetings, one and all. Well, that's wonderful news, Annie. Wonderful. wonderful news. Annie has found her parents, and they seem to be a very nice couple. Very nice. Oh, Annie, you know you're very lucky. I know. Just think. A pig farm. Miss Greer, champagne. We must celebrate. Because it's Christmas, and we've all just had the most wonderful news in the world. 
Annie has found her parents. Everyone, I propose a toast to Annie Mudge. Annie Mudge. Oh, Annie! Annie! Merry Christmas! Christmas. Well, I seem to have the same effect on everyone. I've lost her. I've lost her. Sir, that Mr. Mudge, well, I think I've seen him somewhere before. I'm just not certain where or when. But I have the strangest feeling that he's not who he says he is. Franklin? Yes, Oliver. I'll need your help. Of course, Oliver, whatever I can do for you. You're up early. Yes, well, my parents are coming for me. And I guess they'll be taking me out of the country. So, will you come and see me sometimes? Yes, of course. I'll see you sometime, Annie. Well, you're up early too. Yes, dear. We've been up all night, dear. And we've had quite a time of it. FBI men coming and going. Annie, did you know that President Roosevelt is here? Really? I've got something very difficult to tell you, Annie. Merry Christmas, President Roosevelt. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you again too, sir. Franklin. Annie, early this morning, the FBI director telephoned me with some very sad news. Through the handwriting on your note, he succeeded in tracing the identity of your parents. We already know Ralph and Shirley Mudge. No, dear. They aren't your parents. Your parents are David and Margaret Bennett. David and Margaret Bennett? Where are they? Annie, Annie, your mother and father passed away a long time ago. You mean they're dead? Yes, dear. So I'm an orphan after all, like all of the other kids. Annie, well, are you all right? Yes, because I guess I always knew that my folks were dead. Because I knew that if they loved me, they would have come for me if they weren't. I love you, Annie Bennett. I love you too. Now who the heck are Ralph and Shirley Mudge? <laughs> Atta girl, who the heck are Ralph and Shirley Mudge? Well, the birth certificate could have easily been forged. But the thing is, they knew about the locket. The locket, that's how key. But nobody knew about the locket except us and the FBI, of course. And Miss Hannigan. And, and Miss Hannigan. Hannigan. Miss Hannigan. Miss Hannigan, sir, and the children I from the I told you that oh. I should have. Miss Hannigan, I'm delighted to meet you. Oh, and I'd know you anywhere. You're the Oliver Warbox. Yes, yes. Well, let me introduce you to everyone. Get over here! Let me introduce you to everyone. You know my secretary, Grace Farrell, of course? Yeah. And the president of the United States? Sure. And Drake, my butler. Look, kids, there's Christmas presents here for us all. Oh my God, I just love it. Mr. Robux, it's just 
come from this behind. Ah, good. Comes the dawn, now it all fits together. Annie, come look at this. Leaping lizards, who would have guessed? Show it to the president. Mr. and Mrs. Mudge. Show them in, Drake. With pleasure, sir. Drake, Flanken, shall I have them go for your car? Oh, no, Eleanor can wait. <laughs> Won't you please come in, Mr. and Mrs. Mudge? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And Merry Christmas, one and all. Merry Christmas. Merry, 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 Merry. Oh, thank you, Drake. Christmas. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Oh, hello, dear. <laughs> well, uh, we don't want to bother you on Christmas and all. We just came to pick up Annie in her suitcase. Allow me. And all her. The check. Oh, the check. Of course. I'd almost forgotten. $50,000 certified. 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 Paid to the order of Ralph Mudge. Read it again. Pay to the order of the jig is up. Uh, the jig is up, Daniel Francis Hannigan, also known as... Rooster Hannigan, and also known as Ralph Much, and also known as Danny the Dip. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. Franklin, I believe that fraud is a federal offense and that your Secret Service men have the power to arrest. Of course, Oliver, they certainly do. Oliver, can you turn them over? Dad, yes, sir. Dad, the halls with boughs of holly. Solo for Warbucks. Fa la 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 la. Arrest her too, please. Yes. Oh, Oliver, I never done anything to you. Ah, oh, come off it, Aggie. Yeah, Lily. If Lily and me are taking a fall, so are you. I never seen these people till yesterday. Of oh, the jig is up. Oh, Annie, tell them how good I always been to you. Tell them, tell them. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Hannigan. But remember the one thing you always taught us. Never tell a lie. Oh, I'll let you in on a little secret, you little brat. I never liked you. I never liked any of you. You little oh, gold digger. Your days are now. Oh, good. let me at her. Let me at her. <sighs> Miss Hannigan is gone for good. Yay! And you don't have to work anymore. Yay! Instead, you have classrooms and teachers. Yeah! Guess what, kids? No more mush! No more mush! No more mush! No more mush! Yes, kids, for you and perhaps for all of us, this Christmas is going to be the beginning of a wonderful new life. I know the depression's depressing. The cows are still, the stores are filled. And we knows our minus their dressing. The children don't grin, the sense is stiffen. And I've, I've had a terrible, terrible rumor. No goodwill, no cheer. But we'll get a new deal for Christmas this year. The snowflakes are frightened of falling. And no water fix, no peppermint sticks. And all through the land, folks are rolling. And filled with despair, the cupboards they're bare. And Santa's got brand new assistance. There's nothing. To fear, we're bringing a new deal for Christmas this year. On Varley and Perkins, on Nice and Wallace, on Morgan Thou and Cummings, fill our pockets with dollars. On Morgan Thou and Cummings. Get along, Cornell Hall. Get along, giddy up. Pull your committee up. Build every city up. Cheer every kid up. Fill every stock in the glass up. We have a dog room for any dog room. Let's bring every dog room from its ground up. And time for us the land. Tomorrow's at hand. Those half days that we were promised are finally here.
Come on, come on.